And everyone's shares of Gap inching higher after getting an upgrade from Barclays on the back of earnings. The investment bank noting that the major risk factors to the company and Gap stories particularly are already well known. And as the company works on stabilizing those problems like excess inventory and its losing Athleta brand, we want to talk about what's next in its business overhaul. Joining us now to discuss, we've got Barclays Managing Director of U.S. Retail and Apparel, Adrian Yee. Adrian, great to have you here with us. First and foremost, can we talk about Old Navy within all of this? Because that's a brand that used to put the team on its back, but it's an uncertain turnaround, you call it, for Old Navy with little to no tangible visibility. This is a company that also Gap had looked at spinning off at one point because it was it was performing so strong. So, so what is next within Old Navy and for Old Navy within Gap? So what, what we should remember here is that Gap is somewhat misnamed because it actually the earnings, the sales come from Old Navy and then secondarily the profits from Athleta. Um, Old Navy was responsible for before this year uh, anywhere from 70 to 80 percent of the net income of the company. So it really is Old Navy that is the driving force um, of the business, which is why they a couple of years ago were thinking about spinning it off. The issue that arose during the pandemic was, um, I think, one of pure misallocation of inventory. They wanted to do universal sizing, and they did it in every SKU that was offered on the women's side. What that does is it took up a ton of space in the stores, as well as online, which online is fine because it's not a physical const uh, constrict constriction, um, but it really reduced the availability of space and productivity of the boxes. I think that is one of the key things that, that led to the early um, missteps at the right, company execution. And then we can talk about the demand and the pressure on the lower income consumer, which is obviously well known. Adrian, uh, I'm gonna withhold from, from getting critical on, on Gap just yet. Let's lock in on something positive with this company. because It's been a long time since we've even talked about that. What is going on with Banana Republic? Help Brad and I, under, I understand why has there been some form of rejuvenation in this brand? Is it just we're all going back to work and we need cheap khakis? That the latter. <laughs> so <laughs> you and I go back a long way, and I don't. I'm not gonna. Um, we think that this is purely we call these brand moments, right? Your moment in the sun, and this is their brand moment. We uh, track promos, as you know, very carefully for five consecutive quarters. Five consecutive quarters, Banana Republic has been less promotional. The last two of those quarters, they have been less promotional every single day of this year. Year, quarter, year to date, they've been less promotional the entirety of this year. That's remarkable. So they're sitting at quite literally peak uh, margins, peak full price selling. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, it is the shift just as COVID, there are COVID beneficiaries, there are post-COVID beneficiaries that are your return to work, return to occasion, return to travel. So in my opinion, there's probably several more quarters of this. It probably takes us into early next year, but watch out when we start to anniversary those because yes, they have the momentum, um, but the fact of the matter is this time next year, we'll be talking about worrying about post-COVID winners, right? The return to work winners. Hmm. You also mentioned Athleta has a known risk that's it's likely to remain kind of at this negative inflection for the next few quarters as post-COVID trends shift. But when I walk around, and I don't know if this is just New York City, I think this is more broadly, it seems like everybody is just wearing exercise equipment outside all the time, or exercise apparel, I should say, and footwear outside all the time. So if, if that is the case, why isn't Athleta a beneficiary in this environment? So the shift is from that athleisure. Um, I'll give you kind of just some numbers. So when we were in the full lockdown, seven out of seven days, 24 hours a day, she was in her athleisure wear. If she's going back to work one day a week, two days a week, three days a week, right? That starts to add up very quickly on what she is wearing in the um, share of wardrobe, right? That is basically this athleisure. So she'd probably well over inventory, over indexed. When she opens her closet, it's a whole bunch of black leggings and a lot of casual stuff, workout gear. And so what she's next by, she probably has sufficient athleisure, what she's next by, the next iterations are going to be kind of return to work. So it's not necessarily that she's not wearing it, but she probably already bought it. 
Is that a is that a headwind that you foresee in some of the other earnings that that we're looking out for in this athleisure space? I think about Nike. I think about Lululemon, of course, and and how that kind of over over saturation within the uh, the the stretchy pants department within our own closets might actually be a, a headwind that they also have to cite. So no doubt the shift in in that trend from casual from athleisure. Um, to this kind of more structured clothing. It, it's happening universally. I would say um, we've seen it in other people's numbers as well, right? With, with a lot of people having an athleisure component of their business. Lulu is coming up on Thursday um, after the market closed. We are still very sanguine and optimistic on Lululemon. Um, one of the things that they've done during the pandemic, they spent, you know, they have a, a four-year horizon on innovation. Right, so a third of their R and D is kind of current stuff. A third is two years out. And a third is kind of product innovation for new launches. They're launching tennis. They're launching golf. They're launching footwear. So they are giving her. When you think about that share of wardrobe, and you open the closet, right? They're giving her other options to spend that money on, not just kind of the black legging, as you say. We're out of time, uh, Adrian. I'll have to send you my question on uh, Kanye West making people shop for clothes out of trash bags. We'll leave it there. I'll send you that email. Barclays analyst, Adrian Neal, always good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks, guys.